Well, hello, everyone. My name's Dr. Jason Zagami. I'm an academic at Griffith University, working down on the Gold Coast. And I'm also president of the Australian Council for Computers and Education, past president of the Queensland Society for Information Technology and Education, and have been involved in the advisory groups for the Australian curriculum, the technologies, and particular focus, of course, on digital technologies, which you're going to be exploring today. Now, a couple of bits of advice that I've got for you based upon two years of teaching this with um, pre-service teachers and being involved in a number of different rollouts of support materials for the digital technologies subject. The first is, no doubt, you're having a look at the two-page summary of what's covered in each of the year levels on each of the strands, and my advice is to ignore that, at least until you've got an understanding of what the curriculum is about. That summary will not give you a proper understanding of what's actually intended to be achieved by the curriculum. And if you just go off the summary, you're going to teach the curriculum in a very, very isolated and content-based approach um, with specific things to be taught at specific times, etc. Um, now that may seem useful, and certainly as a teacher I know it's often great to be able to go and grab something and say, okay, I've got to teach this now, but you're really not going to be teaching the subject. You'll be teaching some skills, maybe using some ICT, but not digital technologies. To teach digital technologies you have to understand the intent of the subject, why it actually has been put into existence, what the actual overall aims that you want students to come out of the subject. And it's not just your year level or your lesson, but it's 11 years of study of digital technologies. And you're contributing to that progression of student understanding over those 11 years. And you'll get that by reading deeply into the curriculum. The next bit is the curriculum has got a strong project-based alignment um, with a design challenge approach and you'll need to get involved with that particular pedagogy if you want to achieve the full aims and objectives particularly around the processes and production aspects of the digital technologies curriculum so if you're thinking you can teach individual little lessons on particular concepts with various worksheets etc um, you won't achieve the full outcomes required of the curriculum. So you need to engage with a project-based approach and that then allows a lot of things to fall into place quite naturally in terms of the curriculum. Now, the key caveat to that project-based or design challenge-based approach to the curriculum and one of the mistakes made in the curriculum document is that the elaborations, the examples given for each of the year levels around each of the strands and learning outcomes represent the outcomes of student projects. They don't represent the questions that you would pose to students going into doing those projects. So for example, giving students a problem to solve related to um, their tuck shop having too, too long a line um, each time students want to purchase food at the tuck shop. And can they come up with a digital solution that will help alleviate that problem? Now, you won't see that sort of problem in any of the elaborations. You may see some of the solutions where students might create a database or an information system or uh, an app for use on a mobile device where they could order their food earlier, etc. But they're not framed in terms of the questions. So a lot of the examples that have been provided through the elaborations give you the solutions that students would come up with. And if you just address those solutions, then you're only addressing the production phase of the design process, where students will work through with you coming up with a solution based upon your direction and what you actually want them to achieve. But that ignores all the other great learning opportunities that exist when you take a full design approach, where students are given a problem, they examine it, research it, come up with a whole range of different possible solutions to that problem, select the best solution that they can um, implement from those possibilities, then actually make the solution, and then evaluate it and so forth. But if you just have them working towards what's described in the elaborations, 
you'll only be doing a small aspect of a project-based approach. So I hope you have a great day looking at all the different ways you can implement digital technologies and hope to see some great examples of you in future at conferences and workshops, etc., where you become some of the leaders in the implementation of the digital technologies curriculum.